Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the finest Dawn of War Unification Global League cast this side of East Yorkshire. And today we've got the best of three for the winners round in Group A. Playing on the bottom left hand side as the Emperor's Children, we've got Klempe. And playing on the top right as the Imperial Guard, we've got Vrax. Vrax will be opening up with triple Guardsman squads, a Tech Priest Engine Seer, Plasma Generator and an Infantry Command. Whereas Klempe is going to go for double Pleasure Cultist Squads, a Celestial Lord, Pleasure Slave and a Possessed Conduit. So I hope you're all very, very excited for this series of, of games because I was... I do believe I watched these games live. I, for life of me, I can't remember, but I'm fairly certain I did. And they were certainly nail-biting all of the games that we're going to see here today. So, yeah, very, very keen to get these things on the go. So, opening up Empress Children versus Imperial Guard. Now, Empress Children got two main weaknesses. Tier 1, no infiltration detection, which the Imperial Guard can't really make much use of, as I don't think, apart from the um, Assassin, I don't think you've really got any infiltrated units to make use of. And in Tier 2, when they get their warp time bands out, is what happens with basically every single Empress Children build or unit composition, really. Uh, the Imperial Guard, they've got quite a lot of flying units to make use of. So we'll have to wait and see if we can maybe see some of those units in action. Sometimes the Imperial Guard like to hide in the Infantry Command, which we are seeing one being put here in between these two strategic points. But those Warp Town Bands can quickly cut their way through the Infantry Command. This is all assuming that Klempe goes for that, but it's, it's, it's such a common thing to see the Empress Children. I, I can't really see any reason why they would not go for such a unit anyway. They always just captured the bits of Bob's Command Squad coming out to see what they could do. Pill Guardsman Command Squad. Now, these guys absolutely wreck most units, uh, sorry, most enemy heroes in 1v1 combat. So that's why I assume that the Slashy Lord isn't really going to mess with them at the moment, or is he? He's just going to engage them in long range combat. Actually, his long range pistol is quite the beast. Sometimes you'll see the Slashy Lord go into close combat, sometimes you see him stay at range. All depends on the mood that he's in. Over on this side, we are seeing the Noise Marines engaging in close quarters combat, just bashing people in the face with their Noise Blasters. Which is always unfortunate to see from the perspective of the Imperial Guard. Thankfully, though, they don't have to listen to too much music, I suppose. Which is something, I guess. Command Squad now going to come back on the northern side to support his boys. One Squad jumping inside just to make sure they're nice and safe. No one quite capturing their relics as of yet, but we are seeing a heavy bolt of it down here. Preemptively placed to prevent those pleasure cultists from coming too far forward. They are very fragile. And Klempe does definitely need to keep those ladies alive to keep his green money economy on the go. Commander squad doing the lion's share of work here. Slushy Lord getting zapped, but not doing too much damage. Resisting a fair bit of the incoming from him. But the Imperial Guard do have the... Well, they've got both relics covered at the moment, so that's alright for them. Don't need to really go and take either of them, to be honest. Maybe it's just a, a case of denying the force of Slanesh any additional economy. Going to go for those double warp turbines and a pursuit of perfection. So looking for that tier 2 potential going on here. They've got the green money for it, so they can just wait for the blue money to catch up on them. Slanesh Lord moving forward. These guys are a little bit out of position here. Really upsets me that on medium graphics we can't see their music blasts going on. Did try and put on high graphics, but again, slushy people, don't let me have it on high fidelity. Got Pleasure Cult is coming down on the centre here. Commissar Lord, or just a regular Commissar, sorry, in here. Gonna try and resist the lustrous charm of these ladies, but not down his backside all the same. Command Squad will come in. They seem to be everywhere, this Command Squad. Up, down, south, down, up, north. Can't really escape them. Commissar now detaching himself from these Imperial Guardsmen to join these guys in a merry jig around the Empress Children's base. Pleasure Cults will not be able to do anything against them, but a little bit too fast. These guys will focus on the point of excess instead. Oh, no, never mind. We're going to ignore them and go for those warp turbines instead. Pleasure Cultists, or slaves even, going to dance as well. And these guys have got quite the quick repair rate considering that there are three of them, usually. But Noise Marines coming back, defending their base with cassettes from the 70s and 80s, 90s and now. A little bit of Shakira, Shakira, hips don't lie. Special when fired from an Emperor's Children's noise gun. Will spot some pleasure slaves down here. 
So they shut him down. Shakira did just. Uh, Shakira's recently gone through a. Uh, um. Uh, criminal court hearing, hasn't she? About paying taxes in Spain or something. Hope she's alright. Not that I, You know. Unless she did wrong, in which case I don't hope she's alright. Screw her. Tax evasion. Biggest sin known to man. Slashy Lord. Engaging close combat. Stabbing the priest in the stomach. Very unfortunate. Bayonet charge from the Imperial Guardsman. Down here. Commas have been surrounded. By all the noise marines, there's a massive overextension from Drax here. Although, <laughs> grenade <laughs> seeming to hit the pledge calls just as much as they did the guardsman. Thankfully, I don't think friendly fire is on. But command squad been wiped out. Commissar as well. Massive of commitment from Drax here. Soon to lose every living mortal soul here. Huge amounts of material being thrown away there. Well, the Imperial Guardsmen are trying to capture everything. They have managed to capture the relic on the bottom right-hand side. A lot to replace their dudes. Command Squad quickly coming out. Tactical Control and Tier 2 just about to finish for Vrax here. Heavy bottles have been placed on this side for defensive purposes. And the first Warp Talon Band is coming out now. The Imperial Guardsmen don't have much to go for them. They're going to go for Tactical Control, so I expect... To see, ah, there we got some grenade launchers. And the Talon Bands do have a little bit of knockback. When you do hit them with some explosions, they have a tendency to be blasted backwards. So maybe that's the plan for Vrax here. Grenade's been thrown in. Two grenades, that's all it costs to take on a missile turret. And this listing post, up for grabs. And these guys are good against infantry, heavy infantry, and vehicles. Also buildings as well. Just going to dismantle this listing post over here. Noise Marines trying to go through this side, but too defensive. Too defensive? Too protected. <laughs> I'm inventing words here. Air Command going pop. There we go. Look at this. Come on. Let's see some air play for once against the Emperor's children. That's all I want to see. Just one singular plane. And these Warp Talon bands will be up Shit's Creek with nary a paddle to spare. Logical is still capturing this relic over here. Not quite being taken up by those guardsmen. Command Squad going to get a replacement Psyker while seeing a Heavy Weapons team embracing or resisting even. God, my words are getting so mixed up today. We're trying to get these all-time bands away. They have seen the Air Command and that's going to be priority number one for them to slice down and activate their drugs and just focus down on it. It's not very tanky building. Grenade's been thrown at it. That's very unfortunate. Vrax placed it way up here so that the Warp Town Band wouldn't see it. But lo and behold, I saw it anyway. Now they're going to fall back. They've got no staying alive power left since they've already activated their combat stimulants. So they're going to hang back a bit. Wait for those grenades to come off cooldown. Wait for those stimulants to do the same. Well, there are a lot of defensive structures here. The Imperial Guard are not without options. Like I said, even though that the band can still get through these buildings fairly quickly, will still take them a little while. You see plasma guns on some of these guardsmen. One squad with grenade launchers, one squad with some plasma guns. Might be worth seeing some special weapons teams for those super duper grenades. But then again, the special weapons teams are small in number. So maybe it's not the wisest thing. Also, not the most mobile. You see, a lot of players, when they're playing Imperial Guard versus the Emperor's Children, start using Chimeras right now. I don't know whether that's that's a good idea or not. You'd think that the improved maneuverability would help them against the bands, but it doesn't really, because the bands can just keep up with them, and those grenades will just do a lot of damage to the Chimeras anyway. Good economies of 98 and 41 compared to 98 and 30. So very even economies so far. Yes, the... I mean, just, just double... Listing post upgrades, heavy bolt uh, weapons team in the middle here. This little area here, nicely protected, even with their staying alive power. Oh, it's going to teleport over here just to double check and make sure that the airplay still isn't online and on the go. These guys are going to fall back over this way. Might potentially actually get a squad wipe down here. But no, the survivability of these bands, incredible. So they're going to stay alive and fall back, but they have 
prevented the Empress Children from capturing this relic over here. They will manage to capture this one down here, but no team having a secure holding on either relics the entire game so far. I'm going to see a War Machine Warp Portal. Ladies down here just vibing for additional green money. Got the Dark Knowledge Palace for upgrades and stuff. Motown Band chasing down one squad of guardsmen, but there are more where they came from. And a solid line of fire, actually. It's going to be quite difficult for them now. I'm going to send one cheeky band round the other side, but too many upgrades. Won't. We'll take more than just one. Let's do to take care of them. Well, they have popped a tech priest agency inside the field command. Also, going to, ah, going to go for some conscripts as well. Very nice. Just anything to fill up this field command. It does look like that this listening post is going to go down. I suppose maybe one thing that the Chimeras could do is just help these guys moving around and stuff, but... It is a heavy commitment. You do have to build the machine command. As well as build the damn things. Heavy cost of material. Warp turbine. And maybe this is the idea. Just, just force the base trade. This amount of Imperial Guardsmen can probably out-DPS one singular squad of bands. I'm going to focus on that point of excess over here. Warp Talon Band over here. Looking to see if they can jump in. Sonic Predator on the way out. Needs some more vehicular stuff. That will go down just now. In a nick of time for the Sonic Predator to come out. Nice timing there. And he is out and about. Command squad with a Psyker soon to be there. We'll be able to use that. Oh, where my, where's my camera going? We'll be able to use that. Oh, uh, what's it called? The Kes Machine Spirit. To stop the Sonic Predator from coming anywhere near. There we go. Going like clockwork. That will give the Imperial Guard a little bit of space. To manoeuvre backwards. Just to reposition themselves. Near towards these minefields. It's looking grim. Looking dire. But not impossible. Sonic Predator is going to be a real pain for the Imperial Guard to deal with, but I imagine that Vrax will be going for something. Oh, he's going to go for a Mechanized Command. Also, Heavy Bottle took it down here on this. I managed to recapture this at some point. But currently, fan snazzled by his squad cap. Oh, no, never mind. One squad died, freeing up his squad cap there. So he can get a special weapons team should he wish to focus on the Sonic Predator. Or even just some conscripts just to cap the... Strategic point down here. We go for some more priests. One strategy that we do see sometimes is a couple of individual priests going on their own little journey down and doing a base trade. They are quite formidable individual heroes. Celestial Terminal Lord. I'm gonna weather the storm incoming here. But the Pearl Guardsman. I'm gonna fall back, but they're certainly doing a fair bit of damage, so I'm gonna knock him over with that minefield. Just the firing rate of that Sonic Predator. Gonna force these guys across the river once again. A weapons team gonna reposition down on this side. Has been upgraded with a last cannon. Incredible range, incredible firing rate and damage. That Sonic Predator is not going to. In fact, it might be able to get that listing purse down before it dies. And if it could just. Oh no, never mind. So close. Also, do not want to be. Curse Machine Spirited. Although, actually, that can't happen because the Psycho's dead. So, never mind me. But these guys were brave. Coming back over here, but there's a fresh Sonic Predator. Well, they're sitting in that minefield. Probably not where it wants to be. Listing post goes down, and the economy of racks falling foul and fast. 74 and 53. 116 and 35, so not much green money being accumulated by Clempit. He's getting a Phoenix Guard Terminator squad. Relying on... Oh, look at that. Bit of recycling. And there's not much going on for Clemp at the moment. What was your squad caps being spent on? Is it just a pleasure call this? Oh, the warp time band's still knocking around. But you're infiltrated now. Because in tier 3, you're even more of a pain. Right, okay. So we need some infiltration detection. Some psychers. A absolute necessity at this point. Tier 3 on the way. Very brave to go for Tier 3. Considers the commie, but he needs something more substantial. Lehman Russell, too. 
But that lack of airplay, man, really being felt. Otan Ban just sneaking around the backside. Being spotted by something, by someone. Is it the priest? Not entirely sure. But they're going to be ripping down the mechanized command. Oh, it's not a vehicle command, it's a mechanized command. Okay. Hey, well, this team going to try and re reposition themselves. Run away, young man. There we go. Hide inside the infantry command. Maybe tra teleport yourself over here. That structure. Not long for this world. They're going to kill it. Hit it and quit it, as James Brown would say. And the Sonic Predator, not really being repaired all that much. But, there we go. Phoenix Guard, still being built up. Have you not been teleported in somewhere? Ah, you've been teleported in down here. Ready to go for that double-pronged attack. One for the back, one for the front, just how Slanesh would like it. Another air command being built up here. But can it be built up in time? to be of any use. The Sonic Predators will now make life a little bit harder for those flying units. Guys, we're going to move down on this side, but against double Sonic Predators, they won't do much. Won't do much at all. And just death by a thousand cuts here. Listening post goes down. Teleporting away. I love this, though. He's not committing too much as Klempo with his Warp Talon Bands. He jumps in, Gets one objective, and jumps straight back out. He could probably go a little harder, but up against the Imperial Guard in a defensive posture, it's always a dangerous game to play. Air Command has been finished, but nothing's been built up at the moment. Big grenade going off from that special weapons team. But one grenade does not a dead Emperor's Children's Army make. Tech Priest Engine Seers standing almost alone here. One Priest being brave, but against some Phoenix Guard Terminators. Chainsaw can only do so much. Well, it's not even a chainsaw, is it? Use it? It's actually just a legitimate chainsaw. It's quite hardcore, if you ask me. Like an angry, bald, religious lumberjack. There's no trees to cut down. No trees, if you please. And Vrax, PLKGG, not sure what PLK stands for. Probably just slamming his meat on the keyboard in frustration. But what can I say? What an epic game, that Imperial Guard holdout. When we're pushing down here with the actual couple of Guardsmen squads, maybe potential for a unfortunate base trade, but thankfully Klempe keeping that discipline up all the way through the game and doing all the good stuff. Cool, so let's move on to game number two. Okay, boys and girls, I'm really sorry to say this, but I've tried to make this second game of this best of three work, but sadly the uh, replay keeps on desyncing, and I think the actual file itself is a little bit corrupted, and because these games were played quite some time ago, um, it, it, there's no way to get them back, so that's a real shame. So just just for uh, just a, just for posterity's sake, essentially uh, Vrax wins the game. He picks Steel Legion on this map because it's like quite a nice Steel Legion map in the sense that there's lots of strategic points for him to snag and grab, and lots of defensive places to go for. He pops a tries to turn it down here, which denies the Relic of the Eldar for quite some time, and we do see some really cool Howling Banshee play from this. I might even like from like the little bits of uh, footage that I got to just um, highlight some of that on the on the screen right now. But real shame, real shame because it was quite a hard fought a battle for this, but Vrax does manage to pull it off, so we shall go for the third and final game of this best of three. So here we are in the final game of this best of three. We've got Klempe on the left hand side playing as the Adeptus Mechanicus Exploratus, on the right hand side we've got Vrax playing as the Black Templar. We'll be opening up with a Crusader squad and a Stronghold Barracks, whereas Klempe is going to go for a Warrior of the Omnissiah, a couple of High Paspists, and a Magos Explorator. So yeah, a bit, a bit of a shame of the previous game, but that's okay because this game is just as exciting as the previous two. We've got the early War of the Omnissiah, which is the standard opening for the Adeptus Mechanicus. We'll just be coming over and seeing what we can blast on. There's very little in the way of uh, light infantry for the War of the Omnissiah to really go for. So that might be less effective than normal, but it'll still do a fair bit of damage. Going to go straight in. Going to go for a flamer rather than his usual uh, little machine gunny thing. 
for the Brit the of these guys. Hopefully, if you can Brit the Morale, I will also stop them from maneuvering around and actually doing a lot of AoE damage, killing two in one. So never mind me saying that he's no good against heavy infantry. He's managed to figure a way out in solving this. And a second squad coming out to bash him. And realistically, you know, quite a lot of times you'll see people throw away their warrior of the Omnissiah, um, losing their Wi-Fi, and like, like just like now. You can regain some and just carry on. Uh, but generally, you, you, you don't normally see these guys being used apart from the first one. Just coming in, causing some mischief, causing some issues. I mean, just by standing still, he's able to keep his Wi-Fi up nice and tall as well. So, doing a lot of damage, killing a grand total of three initiates. So, already quite a lot of money being made there. What, 150 blue in total. And denying this strategic point here. So, already in a, in a massive um, advantage here. Capping the... Bits of bobs around the base, high pass pists. No, not really needed. We're gonna see the Mega Explorer to come over as well. She can reduce this boy up. Well, Castellan will come in already at half health. In fact, blur half health even. So it might mean that this will go down before the Megas can come in and do anything. But she can also throw down a turret as well. Just for an additional early game nonsense. So Mechanicus Explosers, absolute beasts in the early game when played absolutely right. And aggressive. She is now going to run away. There's no point in her sacrificing too much. She could, like I say, pop down a turret, but they've, they've got that early econ advantage. So, don't really need to bother. Don't really need to bother, indeed. Crusader is going to come down here and just try and get everything back online as quickly as humanly possible. There's a high pass piss go about their wicked and foul business. Getting those NFT searches on the go as a high pass piss look for those long last rifles. Incredible damage with incredible range. Black Templars will be really struggling in this matchup, I do believe. Uh, there's a lot of their early game units. And actually, all their, all their mid-game units tend to have a close-range flare to them. Which the Adeptus Mechanicus can kind of counter for all their weaponry and stuff. But Castland is going to try and get some revenge for his fallen comrades. A couple of high pass has been beaten down as they beat their chests in frustration. Wanking off a tit, some would say the long lasses are now opening fire. Very slow firing rate by the looks of things. So gotta make sure that they're properly in position for fighting before they do anything. Morale being slowly whittled down on that Castellan. The fires of the Magus Explorator chasing after him will jump inside the negative cover. <laughs> I still like as if it was that was intentional. No, that was not intentional, he just had nowhere else to run, nowhere else to hide. He's gonna snake his way over on this one. I think this is a little bit of a bad positioning for him. He wants to escape from here. He's got nowhere to really go apart from further on down here. And the STC searches look like they've got some electro stuff going on for them. On this side, the long lads is taking care of those Crusaders very quickly. So Vrax massively on the back foot here. Current economies are 62 and 0 compared to 68 and 10. But bearing in mind that the Mechanicus Explorers do weird things with their blue money and their green money with these STC searches. You can switch them on from one to the other. Already got all the um, power energy for tier two. Should they want to go up any higher? Tech Marine Artificer moving forward to try and build up that listing post, but that is a lot of high pass pistols and long last rifles to causing some issues. Castland with his plasma pistol. Is a plasma pistol? Oh, it's a combi weapon. Never mind me. A little bit of buff. If you can't decide which one to go for, may as well go for a hybrid combination of the two. The Temerine goes down there. And Vrax is a little bit a little bit shake, a little bit shook from that early game aggression. Has got some Black Templar assault squads. Which in fairness is probably the best thing to go for, considering that they've got the maneuverability. And they need to get on top of them as quickly as possible. But sadly, not quite able to get there. Maybe a couple of fire support squads just to ease them over. Get that consistent DPS down while these guys have been chased around. That would be my thinkings. Already morale been broken on these guys, losing a member and two members quite low on health as things stand. The siege of Vrax, shall we say, has, uh, has begun. They can't quite break out the base at the moment. They've got a second squad of Black Templars. So two going on. I'm latching onto one squad at a time, but there is a third one knocking around out here. 
One jumps in, another soon to follow. And the chase begins, but like we say, he's got no upgrades on the weapons at the moment, though. So that might be a benefit to him. At least giving them a little bit of space. Castellan comes over. And that Castellan actually can chase around that third high pass piss. Uh, Central for a turnaround here. High pass piss running up on this side. Cornering themselves, well, into a corner. I know, a wonderful turn of phrase. Tier 2 finished for the Tech Marines. And a Hellstalker on the way. Which melee based. Black Templar Assault Squad is not going to do much against it. And even if they do kill it, it's got quite a high percentage chance of just coming back to life with a good chunk of health. So not a great situation for them. But if they focus on taking on the STC searchers, try and get that map dominance on the go. I mean, they're slaying the high pacifists. Very little worry now that they've got their numbers. But huge damage from the zappy bits on the STC search. I do believe it's also AoE damage as well. By the looks of things. So two of them on the go. But the relic is yet to be taken. This one down here. Might potentially be gotten if the Black Templar get on top of it. On this side the Tech Marine artifices are moving around for reasons. You need to capture this strategic point down here. If they wish to build anything else up. Going to ignore the STC searcher down here. And the Arch Magos, oh sorry not Arch Magos, just a regular Magos, has been sliced down. So really good comeback from Vrax here. Also the maintenance servitors losing their Wii feet. And no one's going to give them it back anytime soon. So they're going to have to slowly make their way back over to the STC searcher so they can regain that blue. Hellstalker back out as well. Although it isn't really effective against things when it's away from the STC searchers. Like I say, it's got that limited Wi-Fi on the go. But, that being said, I imagine the Mix Explorator is going to be rebuilt. Oh no, just the second one. And a Praetorian squad as well. It's got enough damage to at least take on one listing post before he goes back home. It's not long to walk back before he regains that stuff, so. All good in the HUD. Hellstalker comes out when they come out away from an STC searcher, they do come out already spending some of that Wi-Fi. And every time he moves, every time he takes another action, it does reduce his Wi-Fi incoming. Got a Trunchler sentry to it. Won't do much against the Hellstalker. It's at least hacking away at the damage a little bit. These guys are going to decide to just try and take on the machine reliquy. Devs Mechanicus only have one building where they can recruit stuff. I mean, yeah, okay, fair enough, they can get their Aos drones from the... STCs, but won't do much if they lose all this stuff. Praetorians, he's just shivering away by the looks of things. To try and get a support Praetorian in there. Quite good in close combat, just needs some more lads in there to join him. And there's a desperate bid, really, as he is behind. Are you going in, into tier 2? You are in tier 2, so actually you don't need to commit so hard, so fast onto the machine relic where you can focus on other bits of the base. One assault marine being spun around and chucked over the shoulder. Definitely the worst way to go when you fight against the Dutch Mechanicus. It's not Vertigo. What, what is it when you centrifuge force or something? Where you, where the literal gravity from moving too fast just squishes your brain in its skull. I'm sure that the uh, space marine brains probably have some sort of organs in there to resist that. But the machine reliquary soon to can they get it down? The main of servitors are over here, repairing it much quicker than the submarines can take them out. It's best to retreat now while he's still got some boys left, but actually they cannot retreat as they infuriated the curse of the Black Templar, forcing them to engage in excessive melee combat. Lovely little bounce on the wall there. Not so much of a bounce there. So Hellstalker down here winning the basketball throws. And dear, oh dear, just two full-blown squad wipes. Nothing they could really do in that. Like I say, it might seem like he was overcommitting there, but I can imagine Vrax was probably furiously right-clicking his boys to come over this way. Maybe even trying to activate their jump packs, but... Nope. Not for them. Now, Double Hellstalk is going to hide it inside that machine reliquy. And the Arch Magos is now out. Praetorians and the High Paspists coming over onto this side. 
ready to renew their siege. Crusaders will stand no chance against these guys on their own. The economy for Klempe here. Green money is a lot. Blue money actually not terrible for them. Frag still floundering a little bit with his money. Has not really upgraded any of his listing posts. A real shame that. Command squad now out. He's got double missile launchers, which would be great against the Hell Stalkers if they can stay away from the close combat. Big blasts from the Archmagos. That's a little airstrike you can call in. Look how effective that was. Three dudes dead. Off the bot. Off the bat, sorry. Good. <laughs> Mixing my vowels here. That's okay. The Praetorians of just powerful fists and toasters of some description rebuffing and resisting the Crusaders advances one strategic point goes down by the Hellstalkers and they are now looking to continue their war path replacement Black Templars command squad regaining their missile launchers yeah the Hellstalkers are public enemy number one at the moment as they could just chunk their way through with their little zappy dip, like zappy bits. These guys always make me think of, oh, it's called I Am Bob or We Are Bob. It's a wonderful sci-fi literary series. Uh, definitely get it on Audible if you do have access to it. It's about a guy who, like, just, for reasons too long to explain, he basically gets cloned quite a lot of times, and he starts cloning himself, and it starts off with one, with one guy called Robert, and soon there's, like, loads of people... And they have like, these little robots that like, I used to like fix spaceships. Massive diatribe, but highly recommend that. And of course, if you don't want to buy that book, you can always buy my book on Audible. Links in the description, as always. Little plug there. Hellstalker at number two. Soon to be taken down, maybe. If a couple more missile launchers can be fired on him. Sadly, they miss. Too swift, too nimble. Just murdering more and more assault marines. Do take him down. Will he come back to life there? Always seems to come back to life whenever I'm fighting against him. But not today. One just replacing the one that was lost. But he's going to fall back. STC search has been built up down over here. I imagine the same is going on. Oh, no, never mind. It's been left to its own devices down south. But maybe that's the plan for Klempe here. If you can't get that killing blow, that's totally fine. So long as you reduce the... Uh, economic flexibility of your opponent that's still a victory in itself maybe even upgrading this to a zappy stc searcher might be a benefit to all praetorians are going in and that's so cr that's crazy though the asm building height yeah i can completely understand like i say almost winning there but just the the curse of the black templar refusing to leave combat is uh what did vrax in the end so clemper wins group a now, Vrax still has a chance to leave the group here. We're going to do... I was originally going to do just the winner's round for this video, but I'm recording this over two days. I thought I didn't have enough time, but actually, I've got plenty more time than I originally anticipated, so we'll also do the loser's brackets as well for your viewing pleasure on a Sunday afternoon. So we're back soon with the next games. Hi there. Editing Mr. Landshark here. Now... I know that I just said that I was going to start doing some videos for the losers uh, bracket for Group 8. However, sadly, the recordings for those, well, not the recordings, the actual game replay files, they have been corrupted with a sync error, much like Game 2 of the uh, best of three that we saw here today. Which is a real shame, because it was me versus Zuma, and I lost. But, my goodness, I put up quite, quite, quite the fight. Maybe. Uh, who knows? You'll never know. For all you know, it could have been neck and neck all the way through. It wasn't. I got trounced. Quite decidedly. I won the first game and then lost two games in a row quite spectacularly. So, hey, oh, there we go. And then Umar was meant to play Vrax, but Umar backed out. So Vrax automatically won that. So even though we've just seen Vrax lose against Klemp here, uh, Vrax still is through the Group A section of the tournament so well done everyone so yeah it's a shame that i had to end the uh, the video this way but yeah at least you got to see my beard so win-win uh. anyway pleasure to see you all and take it easy good night god bless